system of government where we talked about system of government where we mentioned federal system of government sorry presidential system of government and parliamentary system of government i will quickly do a recap of what was thought last week now under presidential system of government we said the head of state is distinct from the is distinct from the head of government that is the head of state is different from the head okay. of government. sorry for the interruption uh, you're not sharing your screen yet okay oh fine i'm trying to Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Elementary system of government. Now, under presidential system of government, we define it as a system of government in which the head of state is different from the head of government. And part of the features of a presidential system is that there's separation of power. The constitution is supreme. The president has veto power and the legislature screens the appointment of political appointees, such as the ministers, the commissioner, and so on. Then under the parliamentary system of government, we discussed that is a system of government in which the head of state is different from the head of government, that is, powers, ceremonial powers, and executive powers are vested in two persons, respectively. So we have the head of state, and we have the head of government. The head of state performs mostly ceremonial function, and it is usually held by the monarch, which would be the queen, king, or, or emperor, or empress, as the case may be. Then we we also have um, under parliamentary system of government, there is fusion of power. The prime minister is usually elected from the majority party, the majority party in the parliament. And then under it, we also have collective responsibility. Whereas in the um, presidential system, we have individual responsibility where every Minister, every political appointee is responsible for his or her office appointed. Now, today we'll be moving on to monarchy. Monarchy, we can also refer to it as a monarchical system of government. Now, a monarchy is a system of government by one individual. Now, this individual is usually referred to as the monarch. Now, the monarch, when we are talking about the monarch, we are talking about um, ceremonial and traditional rulers. For example, in Nigeria, in the Yoruba land, the monarch, which is the king, is referred to as the Opa or Kabisi. In um, Awusta Fulani, they might refer to their monarch as Emia. Then in the Igbo, they refer to their monarch as Igwe. So, A monarchy is a system of government by one person. One person controls the affairs of the state. So it could be a king, which is a male monarch, a queen, a female monarch, or an emperor. Some country refer to their monarch as emperor. Now, what are the characteristics of monarchy? One characteristic of monarchy that it is a ready in nature. That is, it is usually transmitted from one generation to an Prince Charles became the king and is now addressed as King Charles. So it is usually hereditary. When the monarch passes away, it is, the throne is given to the child, the child which is usually most times, according to tradition, the first son in most cases, the, the post is usually given to such a person who also takes over and transmits it to the next generation. So it, it, it's an age-long form of government. 
queen, late Queen Elizabeth ruled for a very long time. I think she became the Queen of England at a very tender age. And up until her death, she, she controlled the ceremonial affairs of Britain. Now, again, it is um, no constitutional limitation, no constitutional limitation in the sense that in some countries where monarchical, um, monarchical system of government is practiced, their powers are not usually contained in the constitution, unlike the previous system of governments like the parliamentary, federal, and um, 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 unitary system, where the constitution is powerful at um, but, but in this place, the powers of the monarch are not stated, the powers of the king queen are, are unrestricted. So they have like unrestricted control of power. Back then, the king is believed to have like supreme authority over anyone. The king can lay authority or lay claim to any property owners of the properties where. So the king had absolute powers back then. But now, due to the advancement of um, democracy and home, the powers of the king or the monarch have been restricted. We'll still talk more about them. Then checks and balances. Now, checks and balances under the monarchical system. The monarch, the monarch is expected to have um, advisors. In some cases, they are referred to as chiefs who advise him or her on administrative matters. So these these advisors also use, are used as um, a form of checks and balances. For example, in the old Oyo Empire, where monarchical system was practiced, we had the Oyo Messi, who were the king makers. And apart from being the king makers, they also check the essence of the Alafi of Oyo. So in the monarchical system, we also have people that do that. Then, stable political system. Monarchical system is stable because it is an age-long system. So in a monarchical system of government, political instability is usually rare. But most time what comes up is, um, in most cases, the case of um, usurping of power is usually not so common, unlike other systems where the... They can be removed with two thirds of the votes in a monarchical country. Now, it is also adopted during times of emergencies. Emergency period, monarchical system, a king, a monarch can easily be appointed to take over the affairs of the state. Now, what are the forms of monarchy? The forms of monarchy, we can also classify them as the types of monarchy. We have the constitutional monarchy and the absolute monarchy. Now, the constitutional monarchy from the name, you can, in, in, in a layman word, we can classify that as a Of monarchy that is based on the constitution. So every of the actions and inactions of the, 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 the have the power to operate outside the constitution. Now, Britain is a good example of the constitutional monarchy. The power of the queen then was still under the control of the constitution. So the in, as a at that time does not have absolute we have absolute when we show total control now in absolute monarchy it is of course use power anywhere or any in any way or anywhere he or she pleases 
now, now we had absolute monarch in the era of um IV Louis um, 14 of France. That was between 1943 to no, 1643 to 1715. So we've had issue of absolute monarchy. Even in our own traditional traditional monarchical system, yeah, there, there were errors where it is believed that the king had the king was seen as um second to the god. So he had absolute power to do as he likes. So this is also evidence in absolute monarchy. The monarch does as it pleases. Now, what are the advantages of monarchy? The advantages of monarchy. Please, I hope you are following. Are you with me? Please, if you have any questions, do, do not sit down for me to answer. Now, advantages of monarchy. We have um unity and orderliness. Unity and orderliness. So monarchy promotes monarchy promotes unity and orderliness in the sense that there is little political instability. So Everybody already, they are usually royal families. So there wouldn't be clash for clash or struggle or the need to conduct periodic elections to determine who the next monarch is. So it's already established. You already have the royal family. So there is orderliness, there is a stable political system. Then there is harmonization. Harmonization in the sense that different interests are protected. So the monarchs serve the interests of not just his royal family, but the interests of every member of the state. And this will prevent um, marginalization of some interest group or some ethnic group. So the king serve the interest of all. Now, another advantage of monarchy is that it is um, a a God, God's own institution. It was established by God. So if you go through our religious, our religious book, the Bible, the Quran, and every other religious book we are familiar with, we'll see that they are, they, we've had kings in the past. We've had kings in the Bible, for instance, we had King David, King Saul, King Nebuchadnezzar, King Josiah, and so much more like that. So it's 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 natural. It's from God. So most people tend to see anything from God as being supreme. So they respect every action and decision made by such a monarch. Then another feature is that it is very useful in times of emergency. For for instance, in the presidential system. Before you can elect a president, there must be election. There must be an election and planning. So it is useful in terms of emergency advantages of a monarchical system. One, it promotes dictatorship. Yes, why no one person out of the state? There is bound to be dictatorship. Absolute power cor corrupt absolutely. So when there are no checks and balances to curtail, to curb the excesses of the monarch, abuse is inevitable. The king can become so absolute and abuse power. And remember when I was talking about the futures, I said the people respect the power of the king, of the monarch. So if these powers are not checked, definitely, there would be abuses. So it promotes bad leadership. It also promotes dictatorship. And then we have despotism. Despotism in the sense that the king being seen as a supreme being, when he or she becomes a dictator, it is usually hard for the people to go against the command, to go against the order of the monarch, because the monarch must be obeyed to the latter. They all agree to submit to that authority. So the, in terms of dethroning or usurping such a monarch is usually difficult. The people are usually weak to fight to protest against the to protest against the monarch because most times it is believed that these monarchs are appointed by the God and they must not be defiled. So whatever instruction, whatever orders that come from them, they must they must obey. So do we have any question on monarchical system or any of the systems of governments that we have treated so far? Because we are moving on to another topic. 
Any question? No, you can go ahead. All right. So we are moving on to political ideology. Political ideology. What is ideology? Um, from the word idea, when you have idea about something, what does it mean? Anybody? Hey, Ms. Sola, are you with us? Oh, okay. When we talk about political ideology, does now ideology simply means ideology, ideology simply means um the idea being held by a group of people, the idea, your belief, your thoughts, you know, about a particular thing, ideology. Ideology, we have different types of ideology. We have religious ideology, theological ideology, sociological ideology. Now, for the purpose of our study, we'll be focusing on political ideologies. So when we are talking about political ideologies, political ideologies refers to a set of ethical ideas, principles, and doctrines, or symbols of a social movement, class, institution, or large group would work. Political ideology is a set of ethical ideas principles, doctrines, or symbols of a social movement, class institution, or large group that explains how the society should work. So you can see that, oh, I have this idea. You can, anybody can come up with his own ideology that, oh, this is how the society should be run. This is how the society should be. If you can explain your terms, then you can come up with a name for your ideology. Now, examples of political ideologies include communalism, socialism, you no. Know? Even most of our, poli our political theories are also political ideologies because these ideologies were brought up by some political thinkers like Aristotle, Plato, Thomas Hobbes, J.J. Rousseau, John Locke, and the rest. They all decided to have a particular set of ideas on how they feel the society should be run or how they perceive the society. So that's why these philosophers also came up with their own way or the way they view the world, the way they view their society. So political ideology is also, um, it's also a related belief about political theory and principles. Now, over time, people have been able to come up with different ideas from the ideas that were presented by this um, political philosophers in the early days, the likes of Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, Socrates. So people have come up with different ideologies that we still study up to date. So for the purpose of this study, we'll talk about communalism, we'll talk about um, totalitarianism, we'll talk about feudalism, we'll talk about capitalism, we'll talk about socialism, communism, and it. Let me take that again. The political ideology we are going to be talking about is um, communalism, feudalism, capitalism, socialism, communism, and totalitarianism. So we are going to discuss their futures, we are going to discuss their definition, we are going to discuss their, in some cases, their advantages and disadvantages. Though I won't, because of my time, I think I will stop here. So next week, we know we'll start with explaining this, com this political ideology one by one. So any questions so far? Any question? All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your day. So if you have any question, you can reach out or drop it in the comment section. Okay, um, thank you, Ma. We appreciate. Um, are you done with the class? Yes, sir. For today. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, um, thank you. I think that will be the end of the class then, since there's no question. All right. Okay, thank you.